So if you plan to print parts like vent gauges or even radio delete plates or other plastic parts you might find online, you might be tempted to 3D print with a filament called PLA. And the reason is it's because it's pretty cheap and it's also super easy to print with. But the downside is its melting point is about 134 degrees. So that means if you print in PLA, your car parts might start to sag or even completely melt on a hot summer's day with the sun beating down into the car. Now you could get away with using PLA for prototypes. I've done that when I had PLA just laying around and I needed to get a certain part to fit right before I tested it with other filaments, but it's definitely something you wanna stay away with and you're gonna need something much better. So another filament you might've heard of is PETG because it's also easy to print with, but it can only handle another 20 degrees Fahrenheit compared to PLA, which is about 154 degrees Fahrenheit. You could also use ABS filament, which is the same plastic found in Lego, which can handle 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but your parts could start to lose color in the sun. So that's where ASA filament comes in. It can handle up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's super UV resistant, which means you can use it for exterior car parts too. So now that you know what filament to use, but don't have a specific part, you can check out the link in the description. We have some free parts that you can modify, like a radio delete plate. And we also have an entire CAD course that you can check out where we'll teach you how to make parts too. So now that you have your part and your filament, what 3D printer should you use? There's literally hundreds of printers to choose from, but since we're using ASA filament, we can narrow down the list. And that's because you'll need a printer with an enclosure, and here's why. Filament like ASA can shrink as it cools down during the print and the enclosure will help keep the part warm. I've even used a trick of preheating the printer to get it nice and warm before the actual print starts. But that's not all you're gonna need. So when I started first 3D printing, I spent hours adjusting and leveling my printer to get it to work. And that's why I'd suggest a 3D printer that can automatically level its bed and properly adjust the hot end. And if you don't get a printer with these auto calibration features, you could end up wasting hours. So don't listen to the haters in the comments that will tell you buy a 3D printer without all these features because it forces you to learn. Hey look, you're going to learn plenty enough just getting started and there's nothing more frustrating than not being able to print your very first part. So for beginners, I recommend Bamboo Lab. They're known for having one of the best auto calibration features from bed leveling to Z offset by far. Bamboo Lab also has pre-made settings for tons of different filaments, including ASA and even third-party filaments, which means your prints will come out nearly flawless. Now, Bamboo Lab does have non-enclosed printers you could use to print prototypes. But since we'll be printing with ASA and need an enclosure, I'd recommend the P1S if you don't think that you'll need something bigger than 10 inches long by 10 inches wide and 10 inches high. Now you can pick that printer up for $600. We have the X1C, which is about double that price, but I think the P1S is a much better value. If you need something bigger, Bamboo Lab just released the H1S that can even print up to around 13 inches wide by around 12 and a half inches long and around 13 inches tall. So it'll cost you around double what the P1S costs, but you'll need that size if you want to print an entire digital dash cluster like the one we did for our project car. And if you want to 3D print in more exotic filaments like carbon fiber, you'll need a small upgrade to the P1S, but we'll cover that later. Now, if 600 bucks is a bit too much, you can also try out the Centauri Carbon made by Elegoo. The company has a pretty reputable brand and the Centauri Carbon will only run you 300 bucks. It also has auto calibration features, but you might need to adjust the Z offset when changing between the different filament material types. But after printing a few parts, I started having issues with stringing. And that's when I learned filament can have moisture in it, which can also cause a print to fail. Now you could dry your filament inside the printer, but it's a slow process that can take over 12 hours. So to fight against this, you can buy a dedicated filament dryer for less than 80 bucks that can cut the drying time in half, as well as keep your filament dry while you print. So now that you have all your tools, let's cover one last tip to make sure that your car parts don't fail. 
and that's working inside your printer's slicing software. We're using Bamboo Studio, but other software is pretty similar. The first thing you want to do is select your filament, and then we usually stick with a 0.20 millimeter layer height. That seems to work pretty good. Now, once you bring in your part, you can orient your part in the correct way using the face tool. Also, don't forget we have tons of free models, including this one in the description of this video. Once you're done, you can hit slice and you might get this warning that there's floating regions or parts of your design which need supports. So here you can type in support and here we'll just enable support. We'll go ahead and select normal auto and show you what that looks like. And if we close this real quick, you can see that there's these the extra filament that's been added to hold up our parts of our device with overhang. Now, if we select tree and then slice again, we can see that there's a bit of difference where the supports are kind of out of the way of the printer. And this makes the supports a little bit easier to remove from the part once the part is done printing. Now, one other feature that I like to use is brim, and you can search for that feature by typing it in and going ahead and select outer brim. And what this does is this will add an extra first layer to the very bottom or that first layer of the print. And this will also help prevent any warpage that might happen based on using different types of filaments that might need a little bit of help around the corners in order to prevent the warpage of that part. There's also another cool feature which we've skipped over, but I'm going to show you that right now. And that's basically checking how long or all the different parts of the print. Here you can see that it's using 44 uh, grams of filament and the total cost is $3.62 along with the print time of around three hours and 48 minutes. Now there's a couple of other advanced settings that we can do. We can also increase the strength by changing our walls to from two to four. Now that will increase the time that it takes to print. You can see it's gone up to over four hours, but here you can see that there are multiple outer walls and that's going to help make our part even stronger. But we can also do other things to increase some of the strength of the part and we can change the infill or the pattern that we use. And I like to use this geoid infill and here you can see what that does. And we'll go ahead and slice again. We'll see that slightly changes the time, but here you can take a look to see what else that does to the inside of your design. And here you can see that it's much more dense with that particular infill pattern. And all you have to do now is just print your part. And here's one of our parts. You can also get this nice texture by 3D printing the face on the bed. And if you don't like these layer lines, there's a way to hide them in a few different ways. And the first way is by using ASA infused with carbon fiber. This gives a part a nice looking texture and can mask some of the layer lines. And if you decide to go with a printer like the P1S, you'll need a small upgrade to print with carbon or glass infused fiber. And that's a hardened steel hot end and extruder, which is the part that pushes the filament out into the hot end. And this is because the glass and carbon infused fibers are super abrasive and the hardened parts will prevent clogging. And the nice thing is the kit is usually less than 60 bucks. But without carbon or glass based fiber, you can get results just like this. It's a nice textured finish that you can get by enabling a feature called fuzzy setting within the Bamboo Lab Studio. And if you want to learn more about how strong you can make your car parts for your next project, watch this video right here.